lot of the images that I create, I think they've got a bit of an eerie aesthetic to them. There are all of these forces working around us. Just because we can't see something doesn't mean it's not there. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't acknowledge them and pay them respect. With the photographs, I'm inviting the site to come in and break open those four walls of the frame and make their mark. The, the moment when I release the shutter, that's only a very small part of the final image. I don't really see myself necessarily as a photographer. I see myself as someone who uses traditional photographic techniques in order to create an image. I think I was so drawn to the materiality of working with analog film and then began to see the possibilities. Processing film is a very exact process. For me, there was a feeling of wanting to kind of disrupt those processes. While I'm taking these photographs, I'll be thinking about different elements of the site that I might be able to use in the processing. I'll take small samples, whether it be ocean water or or some type of body of water that I'm working with. I have all of my processing equipment with me in the car. I have a black bag that I use to roll the film on and have the different chemicals which I'll use to process the film and process the film with this water. And then I'll have a little, you know, line that I'll hang up and dry the film on. A lot of the process will happen later on in the studio. I'll come home with the different samples and often will work with the negatives more using, you know, more jars of water or other samples that I've collected. Put them through the scanner, scan them through, and then I'll often put them back in the water. It can be kind of four or five times until you get to the point where you feel, oh, this is the photograph. And sometimes I'll go too far and I'll be like, actually, that scan two times before, that was the, that, that's the moment. There's this feeling of synchronicity or this, this deeper plane of existence opens itself up. There's a sense of corrosion, there's a sense of almost violence that happens. Of all the different elements, the like salt has been something that has so consistently been so dynamic. I'll never cease to be amazed by the variations of patterns the salt can create. There's definitely recognisable moments across different ocean waters and different photographs. You think, oh, these little crosses, I've seen those before. But sometimes it just creates these results which I could never have predicted. So I primarily use two different cameras. Uh, there's this one, which is a medium format camera, a Mumia C330. And then I use this one, which is a Linhof Technica uh, large format, shoots four by five. This one came from America and was owned by a press photographer who was working in the 50s. It's nice to consider the, you know, the lives that these cameras have had before. I find that using the analog cameras is a much slower, more methodical process. It tends to slow me down and helps me connect with the site. The cameras themselves, they've got their quirks, which I think comes with their age, but I find that that is also something I want to celebrate. So a big part of the process has been surrendering kind of my control as the artist and celebrating the unpredictability. You know, that's kind of the point to recognise this perceived mastery we have over the outside world is actually, it's an illusion. I've started working with bees in a very abstract way. Basically what I've been doing is putting photographic negatives 
within beehives, you know, allow the bees to grow the honeycomb over the top and kind of interact with these photographs of the sites where, you know, they'd been collecting the honey. Though the image is a photograph, it's this sense that there has been this kind of a paintbrush wielded by the bees in their construction of their honeycomb. I left the negatives up to allow the honey to drip out a little bit because just even trying to scan them in was just, you know, a bit of a sticky mess. First of all, the ants came in, which made a lot of sense. And so they were kind of up and like walking along the little tight rope to, you know, eat the honey out of the honeycomb. But then the bees started coming in because <laughs> the bees could smell the honey on the negatives. So I would be in the studio working and all these bees buzzing around the honeycomb, kind of dripping negatives, which was really nice. The joining of the natural world with the photograph, there is this feeling that there are all of these forces working around us that impact upon the way that we live. There's so much vibrancy and so much vitality and so much pizzazz, you know, it's really, it's always astounds me how beautiful the results are.